it's done. This is the linear slider I said I was going to make for my pan tilt mount in my last video. If you haven't seen that video, go and check it out because this is a continuation and upgrade of that project. I do most of my filming by myself, so it can be very difficult to get a lot of the shots I want. That's why I decided I need some form of pan tilt mount and slider to allow me to get all the shots I wanted and so I could do some camera motion control. I chose to make my own because the commercial solutions were quite expensive. I love building things and I wanted to have full control of the design and software so I could make it fit my needs exactly. Ah, I need to use an Allen key to put it together. I want to show you some demos of what my slider can do and explain a bit about how it works. It uses the same PCB as the original pan and tilt mount, which is why I included three step drivers on it. There were also some extra pins that I'm now using for a third hall sensor on the slider so it can auto home as well. It basically has all the same functionality as the pan and tilt mount had, but now with the added slider axis, so you can set up to 20 keyframe positions that it will move between. The keyframes allow the camera to be moved in the exact same way multiple times. This is an example of how it could be useful. I repeated this shot five times, each time adding a clone trooper, then in post I lined up all the clips and crossfaded them to give the illusion that the clones are appearing out thin air. The time lapse start and end positions now include the slider position too, so as well as panning and tilting, it can have actual positional movement creating parallax. There wasn't anything more interesting to go get a time lapse of, so I just had to take one in my back garden with the clouds. Now I didn't have the slider very stably placed, and it was pretty windy, which I believe caused the wobbling you can see. A new feature I created is to keep the camera pointing at a specific point in space while moving along the rail. This was necessary because the normal keyframes have a linear interpolation, which makes all the axes arrive at the destination position at the same time, but will not keep a subject centred in the frame. In this mode to keep a subject centred, you set the first keyframe with the point you want to keep the camera pointed at in the centre of the frame. Then you move to the second keyframe position with the camera centred on that same point. The code then calculates the intercept of where the camera is pointed and keeps it pointing there while interpolating between the two keyframe positions. For comparison, here are the same keyframe positions but with the standard linear interpolation. As you can see, the flowers start and end in the centre of the frame but drift off to the left during the movement. Another quite cool feature that you can use it upside down. I thought I might want to do some overhead shots, which is why I designed the bearing to be held captive by a clip ring. I'll probably end up using it like this to take time lapses of building future projects, filming some of my soldering, and anything else that I think might look cool. Obviously, before I built this, I had no way to take moving shots when doing something that required my hands, so I'm very excited to have this built now. The slider motor is also pretty powerful, so it can work at some pretty steep angles. However, you should be a bit careful, as if you exceed the limit of the motor, it will skip steps and may plummet down the rail, which I definitely didn't learn from experience. I wanted to discuss some of my design choices, some future improvements, and the limitations of my slider. One of the defining features of the slider is the motor is mounted on the slider carriage, and not on the end of the rail. One of the reasons for this was I didn't want long cables going from the slider to the end of the rail that would be dangling down and get caught in things. Another is the quick release belt clamps allow the slider to be quickly removed from the rail and put onto a different rail, so of a different length. And you can also just remove the belt and use it as a manual slider. 
some of my future improvements are going to be changing the 2020 aluminum extrusion for 2040 extrusion to make it a bit more rigid. The reason I initially chose 2020 was because I could get a long length of it and it was cheaper. I was also very curious to see how much it would actually flex. I'm also going to change the staff motors for slightly smaller ones because the ones at the moment are slightly excessive for what they need to be and just add unnecessary weight. The step drivers will also be upgraded to probably some TMC 2208s. Um, they will be almost silent and should hopefully give smoother and quieter movements. One of the main limitations of this design is that the slider makes quite a lot of noise. Um, it's mainly due to the step motors um, and produces a lot of vibration, which the internal mic on the camera will pick up and basically render the audio useless. This isn't a massive problem for me because most shots I want to film don't actually require the audio anyway. Another limitation is that the pan axes can no longer do 360 degrees because the wires from the slider will get caught around the rail and obviously prevent the motion and possibly rip out. However, again, on a slider, you're probably not going to be needing to do 360 degree rotations. It's more of a warning limitation, but you shouldn't back drive the motors too quickly as they will act as generators and could possibly fry the circuit. This is mainly a problem on the rail if you end up trying to slide the assembly from one end to the other quickly. If you found the project interesting, please leave a like, and if you want to see more road projects, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'll do my best to answer them all. Thanks for watching. I decided to leave you with a couple more demo shots from my slider. Enjoy.